Hi everybody, this is Steve from Dynamic Running Fitness. I hope you're all doing brilliantly well. Today's video is uh, another extension to a video that I made a short time ago about why walking is really good for fat loss. If you haven't seen that video, I'll stick a link up there and also the link in the description below. You might want to go and watch that video either before or after this one, doesn't really matter. But this video is designed to go in with that one. So if we can agree that walking is a really useful tool for fat loss, we need to ask the question, is there a way we can get a bit more bang for our buck and really get more from walking to aid our fat loss? It turns out there is. So here are three ways that you can schedule walking into your daily routine and really fire up that weight loss. Number one, walking in the morning. Now, getting out of bed first thing in the morning and going for a walk before breakfast doesn't sound tempting, but it's a really good idea, and here is why. When you're asleep, you're in what's called a naturally fasted state. Your last meal was quite a number of hours before, and the elevated blood sugar that you will have had from that meal has now dampened down, and so your body is now into a natural fat-burning state. If you get out of bed and then have breakfast, then what's actually going to happen then is you're going to up your blood sugar, and that's going to release insulin, which is going to effectively block any fat burning, you go back into sugar burning. So if you were to go for a walk after breakfast, for example, that's not a good thing because you're not gonna be burning fat, you're gonna be burning sugar. However, if you get out for a walk before you've had breakfast, when you're still in that naturally fasted state, guess what? Your body is still naturally burning fat as a preferred fuel source. And as long as you keep the walking nice and low intensity, uh, a nice gentle stroll, you're going to maximize the potential fat loss because if you were to increase the intensity, for example, if you, if you were to go for a run, for example, your body is going to be more sort of in a stressful state and want to get more sugar from your stored glycogen inside your muscles. But if you keep the walk nice and gentle, nice and relaxed, it's not going to do that. It's going to rely mainly on fat stores. So how long should you do first thing in the morning? 10, 15 minutes is good. If you can get 30 minutes in, that's even better. It's actually going to help you know, increase your appetite as well. So by the time you get back for your breakfast, you're going to really enjoy your breakfast and it's going to kickstart your day. Number two. Okay, during the day, and this might not apply to everybody because if you have an active job, let's say you're a postman or something like that, you're going to be on your feet a lot all day. So this doesn't really apply in that situation. However, if you are like many of us where you spend much of your working day sat down at an office desk, quite sedentary, then these points are quite important. But as we sit for extended periods of time, the body's going to start switching off. And what I mean by that is, you're naturally, when you're in a nice comfortable office chair, you may think that's a great office chair, but your skeleton, your muscles are all, are all saying, well, I don't need to be supporting my frame anymore. I'll let the chair do it. So in effect, what's happening is all the muscle groups are effectively switching off. It also means you're in an, in an unnatural position, you know, with your, with your thighs open and bent down at the knees and you're bent at the waist. It's not a position that the human body was actually ever meant to be in, but we're putting ourselves into that position for long periods of the day. So what can we do about that? Well, it's quite simple. Once an hour, get up, go for a walk. Now that may just be to the kitchen to get a cup of tea. It may just be to go to the toilet. Or if you can get outside the building, just go for a five minute stroll around the block and back. What's gonna happen in those five minutes? Well, it's not so much about calorie burn because you're not gonna burn many calories in five minutes of walking, but what you are gonna do is you're gonna re-switch on and re-engage those muscles. It's gonna straighten the body out. Now, here's the thing. It's very difficult to walk with bad posture. It's you're more natural to be upright, but it's very easy to sit with bad posture. We all slouch over our desks. I'm gonna hold my hand up and say I do that as well. It's unavoidable when you're in the middle of work. But if you can get up and go for a nice walk, stride out, straighten the body up, you're re-engaging the muscles and you're switching everything back on. Okay, so I'm not talking about a huge calorie burn here, five minutes an hour, but what we are gonna do, and you'd be surprised at how much you're increasing your daily step count. Now, as well as these five minute bursts of walking that you can do once every hour, if you can get out for a 15, 20 or even 30 minute walk after you've had something to eat, all the better, because that's going to help not only increase the step count and more noticeable calorie burn, but also it's going to help get the insulin back under control because you're dumping down the blood sugar that you're going to increase because of the meal you've just had. If you're getting some value from this video, I would really love it if you could hit the like button and share this with your friends who may be interested. But most importantly, hit that subscribe button, not forgetting to hit the bell icon. That way you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. And number three, the end of the day. 
you've just had your evening meal, now is the perfect time to get out for a walk. And here's why. For most people, your evening meal is the biggest meal of the day. It may be the most calorie laden meal of the day if you've been a little bit indulgent, shall we say. But that said, your blood sugar will have gone up quite noticeably because it's the main meal of the day. So if you can get out for a walk, it's going to immediately start damping down that blood sugar and keeping the insulin from spiking too high. I think I'm going to do a video on insulin and the effect that has on weight loss. So again, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell icon, you'll get notified when that video is up and you can see what I'm talking about with that. But insulin essentially is going to block fat burn. The second you have insulin in your bloodstream, you cannot burn fat. So we need to get that insulin down. So again, like I just said, your evening meal has spiked your blood sugar, out comes your insulin, we need to control that. So going out for a good 30 minutes, if you can get an hour's walk in or if it's a nice summer's evening, something like that, then you're going to really help control, bring that blood sugar down, keep that insulin under control and get the body back closer in, into its fasted state for when you go to bed, which is when the fat burn is going to happen. You're going to help with your digestion. Now, after a big meal, I'm sure we've all from time to time felt that little bit full, that little bit bloated. Well, if, as you walk, you know, the, 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 the movement, the motion of the body is just helping things. Certainly your previous meals that are still in your, in your digestive system. It's going to help everything to work its way through, keeping everything regular, if you know what I mean. It's going to help everything to work its way through. Your digestion is going to improve. Another good thing about walking at the end of the day is it's a good chance to, to de-stress. You know, walking outside in the fresh air, it's been proven to help bring stress levels down. That's going to improve your mental well-being. You know, you may have had a stressful day at work. Stress, incidentally, is another huge reason for fat gain because, again, that releases another hormone called um, cortisol, which is another video I can end up making. But essentially... By keeping the stress levels down, keeping the blood sugar down, you're really going to maximise and give your body every opportunity to burn fat. And as well as controlling your stress levels, calming the body down, you're going to set yourself up for a good night's sleep. And a good night's sleep, I hope you all know, is one of the best ways to burn fat. A body in a nice relaxed state, low stress, good quality sleep, it's going to really aid any kind of fat loss and if you can dampen down the blood sugar and if you can lower your stress levels you're gonna set yourself up for a good night's sleep so if you're really looking to get your walking into the next gear you may want to consider using an app to help record your walking and, and, and log those miles log those steps and I've got a video right here which is going to help you do just that take a look it might help see you in the next video bye for now